Hi. So today's video is brought to you by my latest MMF bisexual romance story, Bane. Uh, I will actually be doing a reading from this at the end of the video, uh, so stay tuned for that. But until then, what the heck is a bisexual romance? Well, that's a good question. Let's first talk about what a romance is, because I'm sure a lot of people don't really think exactly about what it is. A romance is a story designed to excite people who are stimulated by intimacy. Bet you never heard that definition of a romance before. Um, I'll use the example of like a mystery. Everyone knows that a mystery is like a whodunit. So you watch a mystery to figure out, because you're like intrigued by who committed the crime you, and you keep thinking, oh, I think I know who did the crime. And suddenly like it is a twist in the story and oh, I don't know, but wait, I think I know who. And that twist in turns is what draws us into it because the people who read it are people who want to know who and why and that's what stimulates them. Well, with romance, it's the same thing, one thing with intimacy. So two characters meet and you go, oh, I think they're going to fall in love. And oh, wait, they're not going to fall in love. Oh, I think I'm going to fall in love. And oh, no, they're going to fall in love. And that is what a romance is. So if that's a romance, you would think that a bisexual romance is just taking a bisexual character and dropping them into a romantic situation. And you're kind of right, not completely. There's a term called bisexual friendly. And what is bisexual friendly? Bisexual friendly is a description given to a book, movie, or TV show where a main character is bisexual, but their sexuality is not pivotal to the story. So an example of a bisexual friendly story would be, let's say, House of Cards, where Frank Underhill is bisexual, but his sexuality doesn't really come into play with, this, with the plot of the series. Or another example might be Halt and Catch Fire or Penny Dreadful. These all have uh, bisexuals as main characters, but yet, or um, how, to get with, how to Get Away with Murder. Um, they all have bisexual characters as, as main characters, but yet their bisexuality doesn't really propel the story forward. Examples of bisexual dramas or bisexual stories would be movies or TV shows like Lost Girl, where the main character is bisexual and the, and the arc of the series is, is she going to end up with a guy? Is she going to end up with a girl? How is she going to determine who she is as a person? Or like, um, like American Crime, where the entire season two wouldn't have occurred if the main character, one of the main characters, wasn't a bisexual boy. Or, for example, Orange is the New Black. And if you think about Orange is the New Black, you know, they never say bisexual. But if she weren't bisexual and dating that woman, then she would not have done the drug deal and she would not have ended up in prison. So the, re the reason why the entire story could occur was because she was bisexual, making it a bisexual drama. So then, what is a bisexual romance? Because you can have, you can just plop a bisexual character into a romance and it's still not really be a bisexual romance. For example, let's say there's a bisexual guy. In the beginning of the story, he meets a woman. And they go to fall in love and oh no, they're not going to fall in love. And they're going to fall in love, oh, not going to fall in love. And then they fall in love. Well, yes, the character is bisexual, but their bisexuality doesn't really have much to do with the plot of the story. So that is actually a better example of a bisexual friendly romance as opposed to a bisexual romance. Um, so examples of bisexual romance would be, and this isn't actually bisexual romance, but a bisexual love story, but Brokeback Mountain. Although everyone says it's a gay cowboy romance, it is none of them. It's not a romance because it doesn't end with a happy ending and romances by, by rule has to end in the happy ending or happy right now. Um, they weren't cowboys, they were sheep herders, and no one in the story was gay. No one. Um, they even have a conversation in the, middle of, in the middle of the movie about how it feels to have sex with their wives. No one identified as gay, no one acted as gay. These characters are clearly bisexual. This is a bisexual love story. And the entire plot of the movie happens because these two characters are bisexual. And, um... Okay, so you have an idea of what a bisexual romance actually is. And there are not a ton of examples of these um, around Bro Brokeback being the other one. But you can find a lot of bisexual romances written in books. Uh, and when you go looking for books, you'll notice there are a couple of different types of bisexual romances. And sometimes they have these little letters on it, like 
like this one, like it's an MMF, bisexual romance. Well, what does MMF mean? Well, MMF is a determination of what type of bisexual story it is. So there's MMF and then there's FFM. And when you look at these letters, uh, and this is not a bisexual one, this one, MFM, what you do is you look at the middle letter and that's how you know who's having a relationship with who. So with an MMF, the M in the middle is having relations, whether romantic or sexual, with another M, another male, and then another F, which is a female. So the male with another male and a female. With FFM, there's a female, and she's having relations with another female and a male. So that is what those letters mean. Now, where can you find stories like this? Because there are a ton of them written, but not a lot of them, like they're hard to find, just like bisexual friendly programming. It's all hard to find. You can type bisexual friendly into Amazon, get type things that come up. Um, and also you can type bisexual romance into Amazon, have stuff come up. But you might not know this, but there is a top 100 list of bisexual romances on Amazon. So, you know, yay for Amazon. It does not exist on Barnes & Noble. It does not exist on Apple. It, it just exists on Amazon. So how do you find these? And, and you would hope that this would be easier to find because, you know, they, they went through the trouble of creating a top 100 list. They would, you would think it'd make it easier to find. But there are really only two ways of finding that, that one top 100 list for bisexual romances. And that is you navigate to uh, like the bestsellers list and then you on the bestsellers list you find gay, sorry, then you find romance, then under romance you find gay, and then you go through the list of all the titles and find the first title that says MMF on it, and then click on that title, then scroll to the, to the products detail section of the book, and then on there you'll show what its ranking is as a bisexual romance. You click on that link and that takes you to the top 100 list for bisexual romances. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Bisexual romances are more popular than lesbian romances, yet there's a link, a clear link on the list of bestsellers to go to the, to, the, to the lesbian bestsellers list, yet bisexual romances get erased and pushed to the side, but they do have a top 100 list. There is a faster way of finding that list um, for the bisexual romance stories, and that is to find a bisexual romance that you know is a bisexual romance, type in the title of the book into Amazon, um, find that book and then go down to the product details section and then look for its ranking like let's say what's ranking is in the various categories it exists on and then click on the bisexual romance section it'll take you to the top 100 list yes that is a long hard way of finding it but thank god for amazon because like i said they are the only ones doing it so that is what a bisexual romance is and like i said earlier this is my latest MMF bisexual romance, and if you like support this channel, which I hope you do, because you know, um, it, it it actually takes a lot of time and energy to make these videos, and sales of my books are how I manage to keep being able to do this. So, if you want a steamy, steamy story, and the book has been reviewed multiple times, uh, it has a number of reviews, and. The average review is like 4.7 out of 5. So it's really good, it's really hot, really steamy. So if you want a steamy book and, um, or you'd like to support the channel, it's only $2.99. So please check that out. But until then, to hold you over and to tempt you with this story, I'll first get, uh, read the description, which is, Taylor Clark knows why he hasn't been able to open up to his girlfriends. It's because he has a secret. He thinks about the lean lines and rippling bodies of gorgeous men. Until his last breakup, he's been able to hold his lusts in check, but meeting the mysterious and uncomfortably sexy Bane Vanderbilt, all bets are off. So that's the description, and I'll give you a little sampling of the reading, and I will, uh, you know, do a little bit of editing when necessary, um, because it is an erotic story. Be warned. So chapter one, Taylor was experiencing that lost feeling that follows a breakup when he entered the bar. It wasn't like his ex-girlfriend had a chance of being his soulmate. She was enthusiastic about being with him and beautiful, but she lacked that one quality that Taylor's girlfriends needed, the ability to read Taylor's mind. Sure, Taylor understood that it was an unfair requirement, but that didn't change the necessity of the trait. 
reading Taylor's mind would have allowed his exes to surpass so much of his hesitation when it came to relationships. It would have allowed him to be open with them without having to actually say anything aloud. Any rejection could, therefore, go unspoken, and most important to Taylor, his girlfriend's seemingly inevitable rejection would hurt Taylor less. Without that telepathy, Taylor was required to rely on less elegant means. He emotionally kept his girlfriends at arm's length. Was it unfair to them? Maybe. Actually, of course it was. And Taylor knew it. But love is a difficult thing. It is especially difficult when what you love comes with a twist. El Carmen's was where Taylor chose to drink away his disappointment tonight. He typically didn't go to bars by himself, but he didn't consider any of his friends drinking buddies, and tonight he desperately needed to go out. In spite of being in the heart of Los Angeles, El Carmen's was designed like a 1900s New York subway stop. Colorful, colorful tiles lined the rounded ceiling, and the narrow space created an intimate feeling. Blood orange margarita? He yelled to the female bartender with the nose ring. As the man next to him got up, he slid onto the stool. It was crowded, but he didn't have it in him to be gentlemanly tonight. He needed to wash away his self-loathing from destroying... He needed to wash away his self-loathing from destroying another relationship, and he needed a sturdy seat to do it from. With the first drink down, he ordered another. With half of that soon gone, he felt the soothing effects kicking in. The world was a little less dangerous, and the thoughts that he spent so much time repressing were slowly floating to the surface. Taylor looked around at the revelers pushing through the tight space. There were a lot of very good-looking people. The women were adorned in little dresses that half-heartedly swallowed their breasts, and the guys were styled in com a combination of chic and nonchalance that drove Taylor wild. Did I just admit that? He thought. No matter how much he drank, he was never able to lower his guard that much. He was practiced at pushing back his thoughts about men. It had to have something to do with his breakup with Juliet. She had kept asking him why he didn't open up to her, and he was on the verge of telling her before she suddenly gave up on him and called it quits. She had brought his feelings for men to the surface, and now he couldn't rebury them. Taylor threw back the last of his second drink while waving the bartender down for a third. His plan was to nurse that one, maintaining his preferred level of escape. The night would have remained perfectly reasonable, and his life would have continued unchanged if a man didn't just then enter the bar, ruthlessly stealing his attention. Taylor hadn't even been looking in his direction. He had turned towards him because of that chill that you get on your neck when someone's staring at you. The man's eyes were locked on Taylor, and the insides of Taylor's chest tingled when their eyes met. The man was beautiful. Built like a rock star, he moved like a cat. His hair fell to two inches above his neck, and he oozed sex. Unlike the well-manicured men around him, this man looked a little dirty. His three-day stubble was a little overgrown. The wrinkled white shirt under his jacket was unbuttoned to the bottom of his sternum, and Taylor wasn't mistaken. He swayed like he was already buzzed. There was nothing about him that was good. But why then did Taylor have such a hard time looking away? It was the alcohol, Taylor decided. He was stripping away, it was stripping away his inhibitions. The image of the man heading towards him terrified Taylor while at the same time tightening the crotch of his pants. His heart was racing and he could hear his heart pounding in his ears. I'm drunk, he thought, finally redirecting his gaze. Taylor stared down at his almost empty third drink, racked with emotion. He desperately wanted the man to overcome and come over and talk to him. But if he did, what would Taylor do? This wasn't a gay bar, and Taylor wasn't gay. How does a guy talk to another guy when you find them breathtakingly hot and, you're always, and you've always been straight? Sure, that man made it very clear that he was interested in Taylor. Sure, that man was practically the man of Taylor's dreams. But Taylor knew that no matter how much he drank, he would never be able to let down his guard enough to do what he had always often fantasized about. At least, that's what he was thinking. Taylor's thoughts were interrupted when someone squeezed beside him in the bar, engulfing him with their scent. 
Taylor didn't have to look up to know who it was. The sexy musk smelled like the gorgeous man looked. Bartender, two gin and tonics. The man said in a tone that hinted of a smile. What are you drinking? He added, turning to Taylor. Taylor looked up from his drink into the gorgeous man's eyes. The sight made his body quiver and lower body part tense. Taylor fought to speak. Blood orange mar margarita, he said as a third drink slowed his speech. Give me one of those too, the man said pointing back at Taylor. What had just happened, Taylor thought. Had a man just bought him a drink? Had the sexiest man he had ever seen just bought him a drink? Which one's your mask? The man asked Taylor. Excuse me? Taylor replied, confused. The man pointed to the Mex Mexican wrestler masks lining the walls. You seem like a man who likes to wrestle, so I figured that one of them was yours. I seem like I like to wrestle? He replied, taken aback by the innuendo. Yeah. Am I wrong? Taylor felt the heat pulse from his face. The man who smelled like sex was flirting with him. Never being in this position before, Taylor didn't know how to flirt back. I've never wrestled before, Taylor admitted as his heart thumped. You look like you'd be good at it. Taylor couldn't believe what was happening. His lower body part was hard, and he was flirting with the guy. This was uncharted territory. What was he supposed to do next? And for more of that, you can check out the book on Amazon uh, Bane. You're really going to like it. It is, it is an actual bisexual romance and not just, you know, a ro romance with a bisexual character in it. And, and it'll be very relatable for those guys and extremely hot for those men, uh, for those women. And the funny thing about bisexual romances, you would think that it'd be mostly read by men, but the largest readership of bisexual romances, MMF bisexual romances, or women. And I love them all. Thank you so much for reading my books and for reading other MMF romances. But that's it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I do many videos on my central topic, but I don't do them on a regular basis. But if you'd like to know when a new video comes out, you have to click on that little button that says, let me know when a new video comes out. Until the next video, stay cool, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler. <laughs> Bye. And check out Bane. <laughs> Bye.